React app is the most popular React starter project. It comes with lots of things out of the box. There's a nice error overlay. There's, if you want to use TypeScript or CSS modules or SAS, it's all there opt in. Uh, but it's also a black box in a way because the configuration is completely hidden from you. And every now and then I find myself needing to tweak the configuration. The alternative that Create React Apps provides is the eject command, which makes your application go from this to this with this addition of this config folder with 20 of other scripts uh, and configuration files that now you have to maintain yourself. Not only that, you're also cut loose from future developments in Create React app. But there's an alternative to ejecting that I found better. Have you ever considered where all of these configuration files come from? Like this was my an ejected file? Well, it comes from this React scripts package here. Uh, here's the here's the source code on GitHub. Uh, it's part of the whole Create React app mono repo, and inside here uh, is these configurations. When you eject, it more or less pretty much copies uh, this config folder and do something some other work into your project. The alternative then is to fork this repository and make your changes there. What's the advantage of forking over ejecting? Well. If you fork, you keep that upstream connection to the main repository, meaning that future developments in the React scripts can, can be then merged back easier into your own changes. It's easy to do. Hit fork, in package JSON, do a different name. You don't want React scripts anymore. Do any other future change, uh, other changes that you want and run npm publish to generate a new package on npm. Back in your project that uses React scripts, you change React scripts to whatever is your new package name, not only here in the dependency, but also in the scripts here. So you can go and say, for example, Cassiusen React scripts. That's it. That's pretty much it. And it's already a better, much better alternative than ejecting. Not my idea, by the way. This has been floating around for quite some time. You can find many articles on this. And it's even on the official Create React app documentation as an alternative to eject. But I'm not going to do this. <laughs> have you ever heard of the term, if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing? You don't have to do what I'm going to do. You can just watch for fun. But here's the thing. It bothers me a little bit that the React script is part of the whole React, Re Create React app repository. I understand why the maintainers did this. It's There, there are advantages to using a mono repo. But for me, I wish the React scripts were just the, the, the only contents of my repository. Also, if the React scripts are on the root of, of my repository, I wouldn't necessarily have to publish a new package if I didn't want to. I could just install directly from NPM, uh, directly from GitHub. So that's what I'm going to do. Instead of forking, I'm going to clone the Create React app repository, and I'm going to use git subtree to only get the, the packages React scripts. Let me show you. I already cloned it here. The whole thing, as you can see here. Uh, and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm on the master branch. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to rename that master branch. Uh, because I, I, I still need at least one of my branches to contain the whole thing because that I'm going to use that to pull upstream changes, upstream newer developments later. But for now, I don't need it to be called master. So I'm going to rename it. So I'm going to say git branch dash M and I'm going to call it, for example, upstream master. Good. Now I'm going to use git subtree to get only the packages slice React scripts for a folder and that's going to be my main repository. So I'm going to say git subtree split on again packages slash react scripts and I want that on a new branch that I'm going to call upstream react scripts. Oops. That might take a little while to run, so I'm going to speed up the video. Oh, let me give a little bit more space to my terminal here. Now, right now I have two branches, the upstream master and the 
upstream React scripts. And if I show you what I've got here, let me refresh this. Am I in the correct branch? No, I'm not. So it check out upstream React scripts. And as you can see, I have a repository with only the contents of React scripts, which is exactly what I wanted. Now, I'm not going to do development on this branch. I still gonna need this branch intact. I'm gonna use the upstream master to merge incoming changes from the original Create React app repository. Then I'm going to call subtree again. I'm going to show you in a few minutes how to do that. To trickle down only the changes that affect React scripts into this upstream React scripts branch, but my development, it's going to happen on a separate third branch. So I'm going to do that now. Git checkout. Uh, by the way, the command is checkout, but I have this alias for checkout on my Git. So by the way, it should be doing Git checkout. And since this is my development I branch, I could have called it master, but I'm going to use GitHub's newer and better convention for naming. I'm going to call it main. Cool. So now I'm finally uh, on my main repository where my development will go. Now, this if I if I call git remote, the or I, the origin still points to the original create react app which of course I cannot change. So what I'm going to do next uh, to to finish this setup is I'm going to create my own repository. I'm going to call it react scripts anyways. And what GitHub wants me to do is to add this repository as origin. I already have one origin, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename my origin. So back here, I'm going to say git remote rename origin. I'm going to call it the upstream. If I can type correctly, of course. Finally, I'm going to add the new uh, 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 the new origin, which is my own GitHub repository. Cool. The setup is done. Uh, if I push this, let's set it to track origin main and refresh here. You see that now I have my own React scripts and the content is indeed only the React scripts content. Okay. Now I'm going to make some actual changes to the configuration, just for example, just for show. So I'm going to install Purge CSS. I'm not recommending that you use Purge CSS. It removes un unneeded class names from your CSS files, but it might even break uh, uh, your build if you don't use it correctly. So go check the documentation before. This is just an example. So I'm going to install. Um, by the way, I'll be, I'll be copying and pasting because again, this is just an example. I'll install per, uh, post CSS for purge CSS. Notice that I'm not installing as a development dependency because React scripts in itself is already a development tool. So a development uh, dependency goes as a regular install. Make sense? Okay. Okay, cool. So now, I'm gonna open on config webpack configuration. I'm going require, I'm gonna require port CSS with some default configuration. Okay, yes, code, I understand. Back where I'm using port CSS or post CSS here, I'm gonna add this additional plugin that only runs, because it's a little costly to run, it's only going to run on production. Uh, and I'm going to publish this as my configuration changes. So, added purge CSS. And what's really cool now is that back on my project that I created using Create React app, I can keep my React scripts, but instead I'm going to, oh, sorry, but instead I'm going to point, instead of installing from npm, I'm going to install directly from GitHub. I could still publish a new package if I wanted to, but for if it's just for me or for a small team, I actually prefer to not publish anything. So I'm going to do GitHub column, the repository, which is Cassius and React scripts. I don't have to change React scripts here. I can just, just install and it's going to work. 
Good. What about versioning, you ask? Well, back on GitHub, if you want, you can create a new release. Call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it 1.0.0 because this is my release anyways. Then back in your repo, you can use the hash character to point to a specific release, a specific tag on GitHub. There you go. To prove that this worked, uh, in my index CSS, I have this dot unused class here. It's not being used anywhere. So if I start this and inspect this here on head, on the first style tag, you'll see that the dot unused is still there. But if I go back to VS Code and build it, On my build folder, CSS, if it does a word wrap, it's not here. I'm going to search for unused, unused. So it's not there. So it worked. Back on my React scripts, how do I merge back future developments from the original Create React app? Okay, so to do that, uh, I, I on purpose cloned an older version of create react app and react script so that I could show you to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check out my upstream master. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say git pull upstream. Just remembering that upstream is the name of my remote that points to the original create react app. As you can see, there is there are changes so now these changes were applied to upstream master now i want to apply them to my uh, uh upstream react scripts and to do that i'm going to call git subtree again so git subtree split on the prefix prefix packages react scripts i'm going to call onto upstream react scripts on the branch upstream react scripts again this might take a while to run so i'm going to speed the video up now i can finally merge these changes back into my working directory so i'm going to say git checkout main and here you can merge or rebase so git rebase upstream react scripts and that's it for this video i'm going to put a small tutorial with these commands on github repository for react casts github.com slash cast slash react casts or you can also participate in the discussions suggesting new features suggesting new themes and videos on issues that's it see you on the next one